<laughs> well, everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today, we're going to address this right here. This is our potato patch, and we're going to do a little experiment with the chickens to see if they can help us unearth it. So come along. So earlier this season, of course, we planted some potatoes here, and they did pretty well. Had to put up electric fence to keep the deer out from, from eating them all down. But the plan was, when the vine started to die back, that our chickens that are in the greenhouse, we would release those into this area to eat all the um, weeds down and you know, finish off the vines. And I was just curious to see if they would come through and graze a lot of that down without digging, digging out the potatoes, tearing down the, the rows, the mounds. As was anything right now with COVID, we weren't able to get the poultry netting we need. I need an extra set of poultry netting because the current poultry netting I have, of course, is on the mobile coop. So ordered that, it was a back order, just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Well, finally it came in. So the weeds are crazy and I got the poultry net in. So we're gonna see if this is gonna work or not. So since I have my deer retardant fence in place here, it's unplugged, of course, I need to take it down. But my charger, my grounding rod, power, all that are right here on the corner. So that's uh, not anything else I have to do. But just take this down and get a clear shot. I have to run the weed eater around the perimeter so we don't completely ground out the fence. And then we'll loose the chickens. And what I want to do is we'll have this video cover multiple days, maybe even weeks, just see how long it takes for them to eat this down and give us an idea of, of how they're going to handle uh, the potatoes underneath. All right, so all the fencing's down. Now it's time to get the uh, weed whacker and let's get a trail or a path around where the poultry netting can be put up without grounding out. Some of those weeds are pretty crazy. I thought I had saplings growing here, but uh, those are just some weeds. So we'll get that taken care of. Don't think the chickens are gonna jump up and eat all that. Now, I've always been a big fan of this poultry netting, especially for poultry. When I'm in the woods, I definitely can't run this in the woods very much because it just gets snagged on too many things. But here in the pasture and <laughs> somewhat wood-like pasture, it should do fine. Um, in fact, I have never, knock on wood, I have never lost a chicken to a ground predator when using the poultry netting, as long as it's on. It seems to do a great job for that. It's gotten a little bit expensive and obviously a little hard to come by. As I mentioned, this was on back order for, for three or four months and finally got it in. I think this is the 162, 168 linear feet and it's about 220 some dollars once all the shipping and everything was factored in. What I've done in the past, I've had the old poultry netting here before. You guys have been with the channel would have seen that, but I make a horseshoe shape with it. So I attach it to both corners of the greenhouse just using some old garden hose to kind of lock the uh, top of the fiberglass posts in so they don't stretch out and then just come down do 90s and back up. And since this is the same length, it should fit the um, size that I'm used to. So we'll see how it goes.
All right, so I got it in place, tightened down at the corners. <laughs> got a, yeah, it's crazy, like I'm trying to keep a jungle from getting out. Had a little spot over here where my mulch piles have gotten so big they're kind of creeping into it a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. That's the beauty of having a hot charger, even with a lot of spots where this is going to ground, she's going to be so hot, she's still going to produce what we need. Well, as expected, she's hitting in a couple places, but uh, still going to be hot. I'm going to go ahead and let the chickens out so they can start acclimating. I don't, it may not be, uh, they may not be even quick to even come out of the door. It's sad to say that they've been in that structure all summer when they were supposed to get to a certain size, this was their brooder, and then be able to be released into these areas. They're going to end up at the chicken church once the chicken church is done. But let's get this opened up and see how they do. Everybody's chicken. <laughs> well, they're starting to test. It's come out a little at a time, kind of sneaking out. Obviously, some tall grass, so I'm sure it's a little intimidating. But I'm going to come back and check them tomorrow. I think they'll probably be out and about. And we'll just keep track of how long it takes them to eat some of this stuff down. I'm curious to see. And of course, also, if they scratch out, if they're in there too long, do they start scratching out my potatoes? So I'm trying to get them to do the hard work for me. So the first morning they've already eaten down pretty good the corner over here, which is a good sign. They're, uh, they're doing what I expect them to do. Now I just need them to Head south. <laughs> Everybody just needs to calm down. All right, so it's the evening of day two. Um, yeah, the second day, so yeah. <laughs> it's been about 48 hours, holy moly. And this plant is working out pretty well. In fact, I think it's working out too well. You can see they've really started to clear quite a bit of this out. I mean, this was kind of waist high in places. They cleared it out really well, but they're actually digging up my potatoes as well and eating them. So I've come down the last day or so and find some potatoes that have been completely unearthed. And the little jerks have, you know, pecked a pretty good hole in them. But you know, out of all that, maybe, you know, a handful of potatoes that were damaged. So I got two five-gallon buckets full already just picking up what they've unearthed that they haven't damaged. So I've got one, two, three, four, five rows here that are about 40 feet long. So these areas where they've really wailed on, I'm gonna go ahead and try to turn those with the fork here and see if we can find any. Put them in some sacks and get them up to the house so we can get them drying out. All right, it's getting too dark and I'm getting too sweaty. <laughs> so these are the two sections of the chickens hit the most. So uh, finish it out to where they stopped pecking and then started this spot. So we've got about another six feet to go. But um, about a quarter of a 50 pound feed sack of potatoes. And that's after the two buckets. That's where I got the two buckets were from these rows here as well. So I think the plan works if there's a little bit of sacrifice to the uh, to the chickens for potatoes, but they are doing a lot of the work clearing the weeds out for me. Shame on me for letting the potato patch get that bad. We'll keep updating as we go along.
So while Cam and I dig these potatoes, I want to take a quick moment to say there's an O-light cell going on right now. If you watch the channel, you know I use those flashlights constantly, have them everywhere. And they have a cell going on through the 27th. Some really good deals there. And uh, something they're getting into new is creating knives. They've made uh, two different lines of knives. This is the, um, the O-light, or it's O-knife, I should say, O-knife splint. And it's a nice pocket knife, um, lock blade. Has a, has a small clip on it. Uh, pretty sharp knife. I've really been impressed with how sharp it is so far. Uh, but obviously just getting this, going to test it out. I like the I like the lock blade and I like the way the handle's formed. We may be seeing this show up in uh, chicken butchering because it, that small blade, we could possibly do some uh, evisceration with that pretty well. So we'll, uh, we'll keep you guys updated as we go along. But uh, check out below in the video description any details there if you're interested by all means check those out all right let's get back to potatoes all right so i just finished up the last row that was the fifth row and uh definitely learned some things from this this is the first time i've planted a potato patch this large this is the first time I've planted Pontiac red potatoes. And this is the first time I've obviously integrated chickens with them at the end to see if they'd help clean up all the weeds. So there's a lot of things I've learned from this. Number one, I shouldn't have waited as long to let the chickens in here after the vines died back. And that would have obviously kept the weeds from getting too crazy. And, uh, and they may have gone through here quicker, so I wouldn't have needed them on there very long. But I think as I mentioned, the uh, poultry netting was on back order, so that's why we got there. All in all, I think I harvested between 200 and 250 pounds, including coming down uh, earlier in the year and harvesting from the end of the first row. So um, I was expecting a little bit more just far as, as potato density goes in the mounds as I went down. We planted every 12 inches. So um, I expected to have a little bit more uh, concentration in those furrows, but just had these pockets about where I planted them. So you have about four or five potatoes per pocket. So as you can see, the chickens are having an absolute field day with this ground I turned over. And all in all, if I had to guess, I think I lost about 10% of my potato harvest to the chickens. And by losing, this is, this is what you get. So you get potatoes that have been hollowed out by their beaks. You know, they've completely, they completely emptied that one. Looks like a potato skin. And um, that's where they're just digging them out, of course, or digging them and uncovering them. And that red skin, I guess, is attracting them they start pecking through and then just hollow it out like a cup. So those, uh, any ones I find like that, they're just going over to the pigs. <laughs> of course the pigs have left now, but um, since I've been digging, they've been hanging out there waiting for me to throw them another potato. <laughs> that one's got a potato and he's taking it to hide it from everybody else. <laughs> Y'all came back for the potatoes, didn't you? Mountain pigs. So it's pretty amazing. Tomorrow will be two weeks exactly since I put the chickens in here. So in two weeks, they have done this to this super weedy ground. If you recall, of course you recall, it was all in the same video. It's not two weeks for you, it's been two weeks for me. <laughs> but super tall weeds. And of course, you know, I've come in and turned some things, so I've exposed more ground. But it's just amazing how quickly they can wear down an area if you concentrate them like we did. So we're probably gonna leave them in here for another couple weeks and then I'm gonna put the poultry netting on the other side of the greenhouse where we have a lot of uh, grass area grown up. And, uh, and then hopefully it'll be close to going to the chicken church because we're hoping it'll be done by then. So you may be asking, what are we gonna do with 200 plus pounds potatoes? Well, Kelly's already made some meals from the ones that have taken up to the garage and dried out already. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, a small stash that we'll keep to prepare. That's one thing I don't have is I don't have a cellar. I'd love to have a cellar. One of these days we'll build one, uh, but don't have any place for storage like that. We've got some dark spots in the garage that we can stow them. But I think what we're gonna do is can a bunch of them. And um, that's something my mom always did. And we always liked having uh, potatoes out of the can to fry them up for breakfast and dinner items, those type of things. So we may do some of that. Again, not really use these, pota uh, these <laughs> potatoes, these Pontiac Reds before, um, but I've been happy with the flavor of them so far. Well, 
if we come into anything interesting with all this, we'll obviously come back and revisit it or do an update with y'all. But I uh, appreciate you coming along with me on this experiment to see if the chickens really are a good idea to come in your potato patch afterwards. And I say without that 10% loss or even with that 10% loss, I think it was worth it in our circumstance. But next time, probably get them in sooner and not leave them in nearly as long. Maybe just a couple days. All right, take care, everybody.